The Baltimore Orioles look to turn things around tonight after limping into the All-Star break on a seven-game losing streak. Instead, they extended that streak to eight straight, losing to the Cleveland Indians 8-4 to four and dropping to 17 games under 500. Bench coach John Russell filled in for manager Buck Showalter, who was suspended for one game after the team's bench-clearing brawl against the Boston Red Sox on Friday. Showalter said the team will have to get healthy and improve their starting pitching, which has now lost 13 straight games. Yeah, I felt like I wasn't able to throw the ball uh, you know, where I wanted to either ahead. I wasn't able to get ahead in the count, and uh, when I fell behind, I really had a tough time throwing strikes getting back into it. We had an opportunity to tie the game, uh, bring, the, bring the, bridge that gap, and we were unable to do it. And then they uh, went off for some more, but then we came back and put some more on the board, but we, we just went out, were unable to... Uh, Get that big hit. We put ourselves in the situation, though. You know, it's tough, but you know, we, you know, Buck has talked to the hitters and um, and the and our offense about, you know, early in the year we were pitching pretty well. And we weren't scoring many runs, and now we seem like we're scoring a few runs, but we're not pitching as well. And you know, you can't worry about that. You know, we've got to go out and compete and do our job and make sure we're prepared. And you know, we had some opportunities tonight, um, second, third. You know, one out, we didn't get a run there. That really hurt us. I thought the momentum was. You know, getting ready to swing in our favor a little bit, and we, we got out of that, and then we couldn't get through the sixth inning, and that really hurt. Speaking of hurt, second baseman Brian Roberts, who hasn't played since May 16th, saw a concussion specialist today. No word yet on his return. From Camden Yards, this is Noah Getzel, Comcast Sportsnet. Nationals manager Jim Riggleman resigned today, immediately following the team's 1-0 walk-off win against the Mariners. Riggleman said he was leaving because management refused to meet with him to negotiate the option on his one-year contract. General manager of the Nationals, Mike Rizzo, announced the news to the team after the game. The players were shocked by this decision after going 8-1 on the homestand and winning 11 of their last 12 games. From Washington, this is Noah Getzel, Comcast Sportsnet. After a phenomenal comeback victory against Philadelphia last night, Serena Williams led the Castles to a 25-10 blowout tonight against the Boston Lobsters. First Lady Michelle Obama, along with her two daughters, and former Wizards All-Star Karan Butler watched the match as the Castles moved to 3-0. From Washington, D.C., this is Noah Getzel, Comcast Sportsnet. The Washington Capitals secured their final restricted free agent today by re-signing defenseman Carl Alsner to a two-year deal. The move made the Caps the only team in the NHL above the salary cap, but head coach Bruce Boudreau was excited to see the young Burley defenseman back on the team. I think he's a very important part of our team. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he got a lot of minutes and played in a lot of tough situations. So uh, I think uh, it's a great signing on our, t on our part. He's going to be an extremely good shutdown defenseman because his, his body's getting bigger and stronger. And he's, you know, I mean, he still hasn't reached his full um, man strength yet, you know, if you for want of a better term, I think. But uh, 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 so he's going to be very good in this league. As development camp continues, one guy developing his skills was Ole Kolzig, the Caps' greatest goalie. He returns to the team as associate goaltending coach under his old coach in the net, Dave Pryor. Kolzig is excited to rejoin the team where he earned his fame. Just to get back with the organization at the NHL level and being with Dave Pryor and, and um, you know watching the young kids and um, getting his take on things and, and uh, I'm excited. I'm really uh, can't wait for training camp and, and actually getting uh, uh, to be able to work with the kids on the ice and, and uh, see their progress. He, he um, was such a competitive person. I didn't know if he could stay calm enough observing somebody make mistakes and and then prescribe the recipe for correction you know but uh, no he's he's been very good with the kids this week and um, I think it's gonna work out well from Kettler Capitals Iceplex Noah Getzel Comcast Sportsnet it was a crazy first practice for the 17 free agents at Redskins training camp Thursday they came out with their teammates for the 4 p.m. practice, were exiled to an isolated side field, then rushed back onto the field for an 11-on-11 scrimmage when the NFL Players Association recertified as a union about an hour later. Not being neglected. They gave us our jerseys first, then they took them away, then they gave them back. We didn't know until we got out here and then Coach told us we had to go on the other field. You're ready, 
And then they tell you no, and they tell you go, and then they tell you no. And we came on the field, they told us we, we can't stretch with the team, we gotta stretch over here. Hey, I'm about to go drive down to DC. Hey, what, what y'all arguing about? No, I was a little bit different. At least for 10 years, we don't have to worry about it. Running back Tim Hightower got rid of his new team jitters by breaking loose for a 50-yard run on the first play of the scrimmage. Ryan Terrain's outlook is less optimistic, however. After emerging as a backfield star last year, the running back broke his left hand in practice Wednesday and had surgery to insert four screws into that hand Thursday morning. From Redskins Park in Ashburn, Noah Getzel, Comcast Sportsnet. Live from the Comcast Sportsnet studios, this is GEICO Sportsnet Central. Welcome to GEICO Sportsnet Central. I'm Noah Getzel. The Nats give one away, the Orioles try to hang on for a comeback win, and the Baseball Hall of Fame is ready to open its doors to the class of 2011. But we start today with our big story. Wheeling and dealing in the NFL, and we are not talking trades, at least not yet. Still just trying to finish a labor deal. Comcast Sportsnet has confirmed reports that there is progress, and the NFL Players Association could vote to approve the deal Monday. But true to form of this 130-day lockout, there are still details that remain. Most notably, players have to vote to recertify the NFLPA as a union. Here are some of the new on-field rules included in the owner's proposal. 46 players will be active on game day. The third QB does not have to be inactive. 14 maximum padded practices during the regular season, one per week during postseason, nine in the offseason. OTAs are reduced from 14 to 10, and no full contact two-a-days. And perhaps another warning sign of relations between the NFL and its players, ESPN is reporting that the Chargers' Vincent Jackson is willing to drop out of the antitrust lawsuit he brought against the league. Jackson had reportedly wanted $10 million or the right to become an unrestricted free agent, but now is set to end his claim without compensation. Nationals catcher Yvonne Rodriguez has suffered a setback in his rehab of his injured oblique muscle. Pudge was supposed to come off the DL Friday, but now is expected to miss at least another week of action. Pudge's teammates are 9-12 and 12 under Davey Johnson and his old team, the Dodgers. DC off to a great start. Jason Wirth, bat starting to heat up. Frozen rope double to left center. Two runs cross. Nationals put in three in the first inning. To the third now, Ian Desmond at the dish. Rick Ankiel breaks for third. Desmond taps a slow roller to short, beats the throw to first, and Kiel never stopped running. He scores. Nats up 6 to 2. LA rallies in the bottom half. Bases loaded for Ted Lilly, and the pitcher comes through with a double. Dodgers now within one. Stayed that way all the way up until a seventh. Henry Rodriguez throwing 100 miles an hour heat, but he can't control it. The pitch is wild, and LA comes in to tie it at six. Still down in the bottom of the ninth. Two on for Rafael for a call. Fly ball to deep left. Lance Nick can't quite get to it. Dodgers walk off. Nats have now lost seven of their last one run, one run games. Meanwhile, O's looking to even up the series against the Angels. Top first, not the start Brad Bergeson and the Birds were looking for. Vernon Wells torches him for a two run blast. Orioles have been outscored 62 to 30 in the first inning. Two nothing halos. Bottom of the fourth now, Adam Jones, steady offensive force all year long, gets the birds on the board with a laser beam home run, barely clearing the fence, lead cut in half. Bottom fifth now, runners on the corners. Nick Markake is looking to make something happen and there's some Orioles magic. He hits it to right center and we're tied at two to two. The O's added a run on Jones sack fly. Now up 3-2 in the ninth, Wells hits a slow roller to third. Mark Reynolds charges down and guns him out at first for the second out. Let's take a second look at that. Perfect play by Reynolds, nicely done. Kevin Gregg, who served up a grand slam last night, gets his revenge, closing out the Halos with a strikeout of Howie Kendrick as the O's go on to win it 3-2. Baseball will induct its Class of 2011 Hall of Fame tomorrow afternoon. Cooperstown is ready to welcome the former Orioles executive Pat Gillick, 287-game winner, Burt Blylevin, and 12-time All-Star, former Oriole Roberto Alomar. Alomar was considered the best all-around second baseman 
for 10 years, dazzling fans on both offense and defense. Bly Levin is number five in strikeouts in the history of the game, and Gillick was general manager of four different teams in the front office career. Three of those teams went on to win the World Series. No one could deny Alomar's Hall of Fame resume. In 17 seasons, over 2,700 hits and a career batting average of 300. During that time, he has won 10 gold gloves and was a 12-time All-Star. The Blue Jays will retire his jersey next Sunday, the first ever by the club. Coming up on Geico Sportsnet Central, the NFL Players Association is taking their time looking over what the players have presented to them. And once approved, they still are, there still are some hurdles to go over to overcome before the start of the season. DC United stepped away from the grueling MLS schedule, but it was not a break. Everton of the English Premier League was the opponent at RFK Stadium. We have the highlights. And Serena Williams helped the Washington Castles dance their way into the World Team Tennis Finals. We'll preview the championship matchup when Geico Sportsnet Central returns.